In this video, we'll be talking about BFS. Now, BFS stands for breadth first search. The idea is that we can only go to the next level if we have visited all the nodes of the current level. Now, let's see how it works. Now, when it comes to BFS, we'll be given a starting node. So, we'll be given which node to start uh, traversing from. So, let's say in this case, we'll start from 0. So, 0 is our source node. So, let's first go to the first node or zeroth node. From 0, we can go to either 1 or we can also go to node 2. So let's go to node 1 from node 0. Now as we are working with PFS, so this is one level. So this is another level. This one is another one. Now all of these are different levels. Now let's assume the first one is 0th level. We have got one node in 0th level. Then we have got 1 and 2. These two nodes in level 1. Then we have got 3 nodes in level 2, 3, 4 and 5. In the same way we have got 2 nodes in level 3. Now we have come down to node 1 from node 0 but we are using bfs now when it comes to bfs i cannot go to level 2 without visiting all the nodes from level 1 so i'll have to visit node 1 and node 2 of level 1 and then only i can go to level 2 so this is how it works we will go to node 1 and then from node 0 we'll have to go to node 2 so once we are done visiting node 2 then we can go and visit nodes of level 2 maybe you can go to node 3 now from node 3 I cannot go to any nodes of level 3 I cannot go to node 7 I'll have to first visit 4 and 5 so from 2 I'll go to 4 and then I'll go to node 5 then I am done with no with the level 2 and therefore now I can go and visit the nodes of level 3 so maybe I can go to node 7 and then I'll go to node 6 now what would happen if we apply DFS on this graph maybe you would start at 0 and go to node 1 from 0 then maybe node 3 then to node 6 now that's how a DFS traversal would look like in this graph so we have visited node 6 without even completing all the upper levels as you can see on level 1 node 2 is not visited yet on level 2 node 4 and 5 are not visited so depth first search will directly jump into the depth rather than completing the levels one by one but bfs goes for a level as manner so i can first i will visit one and two and then only i can go to level two and visit node three four and five now in a situation if it happens that i visited node zero and i have not visited node one but i have not visited node two so that means that i cannot visit level three or any level higher than the current level i'll have to complete visiting all the nodes of the current level then i can go to the next level so i'll first visit one and two of the level i'm currently on then i can go on to level two and visit all of those nodes so that's how bfs works so the traversal order should look something like this zero one two three four five six seven in this graph if we apply bfs now to achieve this task we'll have to use q so let's assume that we're given node zero as our starting node so we'll push starting node into the queue or zero into the queue now let's assume that we have another variable x in our hand now we'll have to pop an element from the queue and in this case zero will be popped and we'll store that value inside the variable k now we'll have to check the neighbors of x in this case x is zero so we'll check the neighbors of zero and now the neighbors of zero is one and two i can either go to one or i can go to node two from node zero so i'll push the neighbors of node x so i'll push one and two inside the queue now the reason we are able to push one and two inside the queue is because one and two are not visited earlier so the color of node one and two is white in this case now we are done working with node zero and therefore we'll make the color of node zero black now i'm not going to explicitly mark all the colors of these nodes hopefully you can recall this from our previous video on dfs so zero is marked with color black so it means that we no longer will be able to visit zero again now we are done working with node zero therefore we will repeat the same steps so we'll have to pop once again from the queue and this time one will be popped and whatever we pop from no from this queue will be stored inside the variable x so in this case one will be stored inside the variable x now we'll have to check the neighbors of node x node x in this case is one so as you can see three is neighbor of node one so we'll push three into the queue now zero is also a neighbor of node one but wait a second zero is not colored as white so it means i'll not be able to push zero into the queue so we are done working with node one now the question is when are we actually done working with node x or node 1 whenever we are done pushing all the neighbors of node x colored white into the queue we can say that we are done working with that particular node or we are done working with the node x now we'll have to once again pop from the queue now in this case it will be pop from this queue so we'll assign 2 to the variable x so the new value of x is going to be 2 now now we'll have to find out the neighbors of x so this time we'll have to find out the neighbors of 2 now 0 4 and 5 are neighbors of 2 but 0 is colored as black 
so we cannot take 0 as in our consideration so we'll push 4 and 5 into the queue as they are the neighbors of the car mm. now we are done working with node x or node 2 and therefore we'll have to once again pop from the queue now if you pop this time 3 will be popped from the queue and the new value of x will become 3 now we'll start pushing the neighbors of node 3 in this case one is a neighbor of node 3 but one is already visited the color of node is not white so we'll push 6 and 7 inside the queue so 6 and 7 will be pushed into the queue now we are done working with node 3 color of node 3 will become black now one second we'll have to pop from the queue this time 4 will be popped and the value new value of x will become 4 now we'll have to start four checking a. the neighbor of neighbor 4 but not 4, four does not have, have any neighbor, neighbor. 4 and neighbor has a neighbor too but 2 is not color white and therefore we will not be able to push 2 and therefore we will not be able to push 2 into the queue so we are done working with node 4 now we'll pop an element from the queue this time it's going to be 5 the new value of x becomes 5 now 5 has no neighbors other than 2 as you can see and we'll not therefore push 2 into the queue so we're done working with 5 as well now once again we'll have to pop out of the stack so we'll pop 6 this time so new value of x will become 6 now we'll find the neighbors of 6 now 6 doesn't have any neighbor other than 3 but 3 is already visited so we cannot work with that so we can say we are done working with node 6 now we'll have to pop from the queue so the new value of x now will become 7 and we'll start by checking the neighbors of 7 now 7 doesn't have any neighbor other than 3 which you cannot push so we are done working with node 7 now if you look at the queue we have no element left inside the queue the queue is empty and therefore we cannot pop any element from this queue and therefore we can say our bfs is done now let's have a close look at the values of x 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 on the graph 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so actually we'll go like this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 as you can see we are going on to the next level only when we are done working with the current level if we are done working with 1 and 2 only then we are going in the next level when we are done working with all these nodes then we are going on to the next level so this is how bfs works